this is Monica. Uh, listen to Monica's story. She has farming family out in Sri Lanka. It's a very important message that she's giving out there. Hi everyone, here's a piece on Sri Lanka. And the reason I'm bringing it to you is really to help join the dots on the global current farming crisis. And I wanted to give you some context on what this island nation is currently going through in relation to their farming production and their farming needs and being able to bring food to their current population. So to give you some context, Sri Lanka was an upper middle income country pre-COVID. Um, it was doing fairly well. Exports were going out, income was coming in. Um, it was actually quite a self-sustaining country. Um, but obviously the COVID pandemic caused hardly any tourism into the country, but they still had exports going out at a significant rate. But of course, as with everything, that came to an end when the government decided to transition from chemical fertiliser to organic fertiliser overnight. At the last count, the country had 41 million in its foreign reserves and owed 41 billion to China and the IMF and others. This year alone, there's been a 70% increase in, the, in just 2022 in relation to debt. So you can imagine how that's affecting the people. What you see across the world is a never ending climate uh, drive to actually, you know, to find solutions to climate change by bringing sustainability to the fore. But a lot of the uh, talk doesn't actually take into account what we already know about how our food production works and how it should be managed. So inconceivably, in Sri Lanka's case, the collapse of the economy was in part due to COVID. But it's clear that the domino effect started with the transition from chemical fertiliser to organic cult agriculture. The way in which this was introduced was an overnight ban um, on chemical fertiliser. The result was brute quick and br brutal. Claims that organic methods would produce similar yields failed, fell short of their target, and Sri Lanka's paddy rice cultivation fell by 20% in just six months. As rice production failed, so did tea production. And this led to a shortfall in rice for the actual economy. A previously self-sustaining nation that had enough rice to feed its own population was now importing $45 million worth of rice. The ban also affected tea plantations too, with a loss of $425 million. Tea plantations started to fail in November 2021 and the government had to renegade on its promise to go to organic and self-sustaining methods. The government has now offered up compensation to farmers, but the damage to the e economy is immense. The result of this farming economic mess is that once a middle income country is now on its knees, a soaring inflation rate and a depreciation on its current currency have forced local people to reduce what they buy and stand in line, wait for queue, waiting in queues and actually going through a fuel crisis. Having spoken to farmers here today, chemical fertiliser, which was once 1,500 rupees, which is about £3.41 for a 50 kilogram bag, costs now 50,000, which is £113.58 for a 50 kilogram bag. This gives you an indication of how affordable things were and the rate at which they have increased. So what can we learn? So firstly, current prices on chemical fertilizer are through the roof for many economies. And if we want our local farmers to be in the best position to keep the food supply going, they need to have access to affordable fertilizer that will produce the crop quantity that a population actually needs. Secondly, sustainable farming in theory might be good for climate change, but the real issue is how you bring this into fruition. Politicians that sit round tables have no real clue about how to solve this crisis. Their solutions are about how fast we can act, um, but really what matters is the how. How do you bring this into being? Finally, the most important thing that we can learn from this is that farmers across the world need to be sought for their input over how food production actually works. They need to be engaged in discussions on how sustainability farming can work and how this should be introduced. These are my three points. Um, it's a shame the country is um, on its knees. 
So that's the overview of Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka is an island nation that is going, currently going through a crisis of its own, like many of the economies of today's world. But the truth is it all begins with farming and the control of land needs to remain in farmers' hands in order for them to produce the food with their knowledge that they know that the population needs.